It's the Spooky Show with Willie. <laughs> Greetings, ghouls, and welcome to the Spooky Show. I'm your host, Willie Muse, coming to you from the Void of Unimaginable Horror. And I don't know if you can tell this, but right now I'm dealing with a little bit of a spider problem at home. Can, can, can you tell? I am not happy. My apartment spider infestation has gotten out of control. And actually, no, you know what? It's not so much an infestation as it is an onslaught. Also, it's not so much an apartment as it is a dark room full of swords designed to poke me for all eternity. In the past week, the spiders have bitten me like crazy, they've laid eggs in my breakfast cereal, and one of them even wrote something homophobic in her web, like a very prejudiced Charlotte. I know I normally talk about monsters and stuff on this show, but a man can only defend himself from an army of tarantulas using a sword he pulled out of his own butt for so long before he realizes that there are things that exist in the real world that are way scarier than any of the creatures that only exist here in the void. Uh, with that in mind, instead of trying to tell you why you shouldn't be afraid of something, I'm going to spend today telling you why you absolutely should be. Here are five terrifying spiders that actually exist. <coughs> Before we begin, I'm going to issue a little bit of a warning. I'm told that even without this video, a lot of you may already have a strong fear of spiders, and to test this, I did a little experiment on my platonic friend, Matt. No. Hey, Matt. Why? Ooh. Ooh. Why? Why? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <sighs> oh, if you're wondering why I'm not in the void in those videos, it's because I'm allowed to leave if it's for the purposes of spreading mischief. Or tweeting pictures of dogs. Uh, anyway, the reason I bring any of this up at all is to say that if you don't like spiders, then maybe this isn't the episode for you. So now is your official trigger warning. If, however, you're not a little bitch wuzzy, then let's get on with the episode and start out by discussing the biggest spider that there is. The Goliath Bird Eater is not only a terrifying hell beast, it's also a pretty good band name. The spider has a leg span of about 11 inches, which for those of you using the metric system, well, you can go fuck yourself because I'm not going to Google the conversion for you. It weighs about 0.4 pounds, which may not seem like that much, but remember that we're talking about spiders here. And I personally don't think that their weight should ever be expressible in pounds because, well, that's just too damn big. The Goliath bird eater uses its mass to prey on a wide variety of animals in the wild. As its name suggests, it occasionally feeds on birds, although it's more commonly been known to eat things like frogs, snakes, and some of your smaller rodents. Eating these animals is a breeze for these behemoths, because aside from their size, they have a lot of equipment to work with. The crown jewel of the bird eater arsenal is its fangs, which are two inches long and capable of piercing the skull of a small rodent. I didn't care for that one. Of course, it rarely has to break those bad boys out, because before it does that, it will defend itself by using the fucking toxic hairs that are covering its body. When threatened, the spiders will release a cloud of these hairs as a defense mechanism, and these barbs cause pain for days for anyone unlucky enough to be hit by them, which thankfully is not many humans as we rarely come into contact with these monsters in the wild. Thank God. Of course, even the largest spider isn't that much larger than your average shoe, so in this case, size might not be all that impressive. Okay, you know you can stop with that joke now. Nobody wants to see it. Anyways, let's move on to talking about one of the more creepy crawly spiders, because honestly, those are the scarier kind to me. And perhaps there's no scarier creepy crawly spider than the brown recluse. Though the largest of these guys are barely over 0.75 inches, what they lack in size, they more than make up for in deadliness. Because unlike those wussy-ass bird eaters, these guys are toxic as fuck. 
And you know, it's not even like the cool vomit for a bit and then die fun kind of toxic. These guys are poisonous in a way that is truly terrifying. Recluse spiders, be they brown or some other member of the genus, produce venom that results in what's called loxocellism. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but let's just say that you know an animal is scary when they have their own form of poison that has its own fairly in-depth Wikipedia page. Uh, basically what happens is that once one of these bad boys bites you, it forms a sore on your skin, which will eventually become necrotic, which essentially means that the cells die. And though I could try to explain to you why that's horrifying, it's unfortunately a lot easier to just show you. Unless you have a huge problem with Queen Mary the First's face, uh, this without question is going to be the most upsetting thing I will ever show you on this show, so... Trigger warning. Ugh, God. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, all right, let's uh, cleanse our palates of, of, of that by, um... Are you serious? Talking about another venomous spider? The next eight-legged fellows we'll discuss are spiders from the genus Phonutria, also known as Brazilian wandering spiders or banana spiders. Uh, they got that last nickname because they are known to sleep in banana plants, resulting in them occasionally being shipped around the world. And though this is a relatively rare occurrence, it's still terrifying because, as I've already implied, these little dudes are as poisonous as your enemy's cake. I just made that up. That's not a real expression. Bites from a banana spider release a neurotoxin, which in high enough doses causes you to become paralyzed before you stop breathing and subsequently die. Uh, in non-lethal doses, the bites are extremely painful, and while they don't cause necrosis like with the recluses, they do have their own fun side effect. Boners. Pro probably not going to show you a picture of that, though. Uh, the bites cause what's known as priapism, which is essentially a very long and very painful erection, which is a fear that I did not realize I had until just now. Uh, what's worse is because of this effect, researchers are actually using the venom as a cure for erectile dysfunction, because you know how there's nothing sexier than in injecting your wiener with spider poison? Actually, before we go on, I want to say that there's been a lot of talk about wieners on this episode, and I just want to assure everyone watching that this isn't usually that type of show, okay? I don't know why we mention wieners so much today, but we don't normally do it, and as far as this show is concerned, I don't even have one of those, okay? Canonically, I'm like a Ken doll down there. It's just plastic that says Mattel in raised letters. Anyway, let's move on. If my infestation has taught me anything, it's that the worst part about spiders is their ability to multiply like crazy. So let's discuss that now by moving on to one hell of a breeder. Uh, please welcome the ugliest entry on this list, the wolf spider. Uh, depending on which species we're talking about, a spider can lay between two and a thousand eggs at any given time. Uh, how they do this varies, but without question, the weirdest method of spider baby making comes to us from the wolf spider family of spiders. And Well, let's just say that they like to keep their babies close to the heart. Unlike other spiders, they keep their eggs attached to their abdomens via spinnerets, which basically means that they drag egg sacs full of unborn spider fetuses around with them in their butthole. It's like if instead of carrying you in her belly, your mom stuck a bindle up her bum and brought you to term that way. Uh, surprisingly, though, how they birth their babies is not nearly as strange as how they raise them once they're born. Basically, the babies don't just leave their mother once they hatch, but instead cling to her abdomen until they're big enough to go out on their own. And while that might sound cute if we were talking about, like, a koala or a hop goblin. When we're talking about a spider, it looks like this. You know in video games, 
When a boss has smaller versions of itself on its body that crawl out and attack you and are a huge pain in your ass. The wolf spider is basically just that in real life. Once those dozens of babies grow up, they just get more terrifying from there. Uh, not only are wolf spiders great at camouflage, but they might also be very poisonous, meaning that they could be hiding in your very room right now watching you, just waiting to bite you dead, and you never even know. And heck, even if it's not a wolf spider, odds are that there is some spider very close to you as we speak, because even if you don't always see them, these things are literally everywhere. They're on every continent that matters, and they survive in all different types of habitats. Now, a lot of you are probably saying something along the lines of, uh, they can't possibly be everywhere. Uh, if I want to escape them, I'll just swim to the middle of a freshwater lake. And to you, I say that you chose a very specific way to be wrong, but thank you for providing me with a good transition to the last part of this video. Ladies and gentlemen, and... Everyone else who's sick of feeling excluded by a gender binary, I give you the diving bell spider. Uh, though it may not look like much, this little guy is unique among his spider brethren because he's the only species of spider that spends most of his time underwater. Uh, the way he manages this is, well, let's say impressive. Diving bell spiders aren't that different from other spiders in the sense that even though they live underwater, they still need to breathe air. The way that they get around this is terrifyingly complex and basically just amounts to them building themselves scuba suits. Seriously. The way that they do this is, again, not that different from how other spiders do things. They build webs. Uh, they spin silk in between aquatic plants in order to house air, which they go up and collect from the surface world. Uh, and once they have it, they can carry those air pockets around on their backs and use them like gills to travel around the water and hunt like the creepy little bitches that they are. Uh, though this process has a logical scientific explanation, seeing it in action looks, looks to me like witchcraft and an Honestly, even though it's real, it's still weirder than any vampire or, or dragon that I've ever discussed on this show. And yeah, if I have one takeaway this week, it's that spiders can be just as strange and just as creepy as any myth or legend. Just because something is real doesn't mean that it's any less of a monster than some creature dreamed up by the dark recesses of the human imagination. And uh, though normally I would reflect on my topic a little bit longer than that, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that this week because I got to go burn my house to the ground to kill all those little eight-legged bastards dead. Uh, before I go, I'll just say to like, subscribe, share, comment, write my name in neon lights, anything you can do to help me grow. Also, please keep sending me your personal ghost stories because I do plan on sharing them soon. It's... Uh, well, it's just taken me a little bit longer to make myself a spooky wedding dress costume than I was expecting. Take that as you will. Um, other than that, I don't have much to say besides, I'm Willie Muse and this was The Spooky Show. See you later, ghouls.